Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa House. Um, I know this is an emotionally charged topic with a lot of the lives on the line. Uh, there are a lot of Iowans who suffer from gender dysphoria and related illnesses, so um, I'd like to start by calling upon the Holy Spirit to be with us and, and guide us during this discussion for the benefit and uplifting of all Iowans. This, this bill is important and urgently needed, uh, but so is Amendment 8, 8042. Uh, I'm very thankful for the House Education Committee for bringing this bill forward, uh, which removes the tort liability protections of Chapter 669 and Chapter 670 for public entities which choose to violate women's sports. Amendment H8042 would germanely extend the removal of those liability provisions to any in educational institution which offers courses, instruction, or influence to students which reasonably lead a student for the purposes of athletic participation to be confused as to the student's sex or the nature of biological sex as defined in the bill. Because if my view and um, what we've been seeing is that if a school district is confusing students, leading them into mental illness with trans-affirming curriculum or queer-affirming curriculum or concealing symptoms of gender dysphoria from parents or a host of anything else that's described in this Iowa City Community School District document, um, if they're doing those things which would lead a person to reasonably reasonably lead a person uh, that a gender dysphoric biological male uh, wishing to or feeling entitled to compete as a woman, I believe they should similarly be disqualified from the liability protections of Chapter 669 and 670. And I think basically to sum up this amendment, all I'm asking for is that our public institutions do not encourage or condone mental illness. While I am immensely appreciative of this bill that's been brought forward, um, and I'm confident that as this amendment is written, or as the bill is written, it will do a lot of good for Iowans, I'm deeply concerned that unless we more comprehensively examine uh, these issues, that these problems will persist and continue to grow worse. This is a complex topic that can be very confusing with ever-evolving terminology and definitions, and sometimes it's very hard to even reach an agreement on the definition of a particular word, such as woman. Um, but the deeper problem needing attention involves the truth of who and what we are as human beings. The more the state of Iowa is aligned with that truth, and the more peace and prosperity that will naturally flow, naturally flow from living healthy, honest lives. Gender dysphoria is a recognized mental illness. And... As, as we acknowledge, uh, the knowledge that we have of this mental illness is limited and unknown, at least according to the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. Um, but some people like to pretend to know that they have all the answers to this uh, complex question. So I guess to aid in the understanding of this topic and just make sure that we're all on the same page of what the problem truly is, um, I'm going to use some language that we use down in Fairfield, uh, the Vedic terms for this. So... The female anatomy, which makes a woman clearly distinct from all else, is known in Sanskrit as the yoni, uh, which is roughly tra translated to mean sacred womb space. Then the, sa the Sanskrit word for the male anatomy is lingam, which will be roughly translated to wand of light. And while human beings come from and are made of the same source, there exists a clear, dualistic, energetic delineation that is necessary and fundamentally essential to the progenesis of the species. Yes, the biological distinctions between man and woman is a clear, dualistic, energetic delineation that is necessary and fundamentally essential to the progenesis of the species. However, as I'm hearing, there's a lot of confusion still on this topic. So that's what I see as really the problem, is um, we have a lot of young children uh, with out there and they have a, a sacred womb space but they're confused and think they have a wand of light and conversely there are some children that have a wand of light and think that they're entitled to the same uh, protections of someone with a sacred womb space where is this or, uh, where is this confusion originating from how is this confusion happening how can a young person be so confused as to reject their fundamental biological nature that is essential to the progenesis of the species 
So that's why this amendment is necessary, because unless we address the root cause of why we see gender dysphoria diagnosis rising, and gender dysphoria is a very multifaceted, complex disease with various manifestations that maybe, we'd, maybe that's not the best word to use. But unless we're really getting to the source of that, these problems are going to persist and grow worse. So yes, gender dysphoria is a mental illness, and when confusion exists within a person, it becomes an energetic distortion that is shown to lead to an extensive, extensive list of severe consequences. Stay your point. At some point, are we going to talk about what this amendment does? Well, the lady from Polk and the gentleman from Harrison approach well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So again, for the benefit of the body and for the uh, listening public, both the bill and the amendment are dealing with Chapter 669 and Chapter 670 of the Iowa Code, which protect government institutions from tort and liability. Um, and what I feel that they, they should not be deserving of that legal protection if they are treating or affirming mental illness in a way which could lead to bad outcomes. And um, we've seen bad outcomes in various parts of the country. So, um, yeah, there's a, a lot of emotion charged this amendment. Uh, there's a lot to discuss. I wish I could go through every case study of gender dysphoria in my community that I'm familiar with and uh, talk about the challenges that we face and, and the prayers we need to come together and say. Um, but it boils down to this. This amendment is... I don't believe the state of Iowa should provide liability protections to any educational institution that affirms mental illness. What other mental illness is treated with unquestioning affirmation? Are individuals suffering from schizophrenia treated with affirmation? Are substance abuse and chemical addiction, is that treated with affirmation? If a person had a malignant sarcoma, would the proper treatment be affirmation? No, a sarcoma would be treated with aggressive therapies to remove or heal the cancerous growth. And that same medical framework should be applied to the epidemic of identity disorders affecting our children. Without this amendment, this bill is akin to applying CBD oil on a malignant sarcoma. Yes, it will provide temporary and soothing relief that I know so many people are looking forward to. However, this cancer will remain and will continue to grow. So what this amendment ultimately does is ensure that our public institutions are not aiding and abetting in the formation of mental illness, or if they are, that they are not subject to the liability, or that they are subject to liability and damages caused by their actions, like anyone else would be. Nothing in this amendment would condemn or disparage mental illness either. Make no mistake, I believe that every individual, including any person diagnosed with gender dysphoria or a related disorder, they absolutely deserve to be included and benefit from civil society. But what we must ensure is that we are not bending the world to conform with the mental illness of others. And um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's the purpose of the amendment. Um, I think there's a lot more that could be discussed. Um, Recently, well, anyway, I, I, well, I'll just end with this. That I recently heard an interview with a, t a former educator from the Ames School District. All right, I'll, I'll uh, with... Re I'll, Representative Shipley, hold, just hold on a second. Uh, state your point. Has not, this amendment has nothing to do with a recent interview that Representative Shipley heard. He can stick to the, stick to the amendment and the policy contained within it. As your previous rulings and questions of point of order have have suggested. Well, the gentleman from Woodbury and the gentleman from Van Buren, please approach well. <coughs> Representative Shipley, you have two minutes remaining of your closing remarks. Mr. Open Speaker, remarks. and uh, thank you, ladies, uh, the, ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa House, again, for the privilege of being able to deliver these remarks. Um, two closing thoughts I'd like to leave with you on why I feel it's very important that we remove these liability protections from school districts who were found in violation of these policies is uh, I, I was, had a great opportunity to hear from an a former educator in Ames 
who indicated he left the school district precisely um, because these sorts of things are occurring. And then uh, lastly, and this is why I think it is so incredibly important, because this bill is brought for us today because of so many brave, incredible young women that have been courageous to come here and tell their stories. And what they revealed to me last week is they don't feel very supported in their school districts, and they feel um, that they've been re receiving a lot of hate from their fellow students and not being supported from staff. So uh, due to the existence of that, I think it's very important that we remove these liability protections from school districts and make sure that if any educational institution is involved in the affirmation and the formation of mental illness, which can lead to irreversible harm on a person or a family, that uh, they would be sufficiently held liable uh, for their actions. So uh, that is the amendment, and I'm uh, looking forward to any discussion and questions you may have. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Sioux, Representative Wheeler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, Representative Shipley, I appreciate where you're coming from. I appreciate your passion on this issue. I simply believe that this is probably for another time in a different place, in a different form. Uh, this would massively expand the scope of what we're trying to accomplish in this bill, so I would urge the body at this time to reject this amendment. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the chair recognizes Representative Shipley for closing remarks on Amendment H8045. All right, well, again, I just really appreciate all the discussion today. I think this is so important. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, these issues that involve a child's upbringing and their nurturing uh, are just so fundamentally crucial to our peace and prosperity as Iowans. Um, and I guess uh, with all that being said and with, with the great um, progress that's been made on these issues... I will move the amendment and ask for a division of the record. Have you all now voted? The clerk closed the machine. The House pay attention results of the vote. Those voting aye, three. Those voting no, 90. Apps are not voting seven. The amendment has failed. Will the clerk call up the next amendment? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa House, uh, really quick, I just wanted to address a few things that came up. Um, Representative Smith, I think you're absolutely right that this debate revealed a lot of things and um, shows the nature of the work of the State House. I was very disappointed members of your party were calling points of order without even reading or knowing the subject matter of the bill. Um, so I, I think that's... State your point. If we're talking about impugning members by implying that we had not read the bill or did not understand the material, it is impugning my and our integrity. Rep Representative Comfirst and Winchettle only, please approach well. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my apologies to the ladies and gentlemen of the Iowa House. Um, I was under the mistaken impression that other people's comments would, were, were under the rules. I guess the last thing I'll say, I just want to make it very clear where I'm coming from, that when I say gender dysphoria is a mental illness, that's not me saying that. I'm referencing the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of, Manu of Mental Disorders, 5th edition. So I think it just needs to be very, very clear what we're talking about and for certain leaders to get up and say that so and such and such, gender dysphoria is not mental illness. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders says it does. So this is not Representative Shipley's opinion. This is just legislators trying to comprehend the state of psychiatric health in this nation and how to best provide the tender love and care we need for all individuals, but be clearly recognizing that health is health and illness is illness, and when we confuse the two, it's going to lead to bad consequences. So uh, thank you and uh, appreciate everyone.